This is not Chevrolet's first electric car, but it is one of the newly arriving crop of electric SUVs that General Motors hopes will transition Americans out of their mainstream Chevrolet gas vehicles and into mainstream Chevrolet electric vehicles. This is the new 2024 Chevrolet Blazer EV, and it's the largest of the electric EVs in the Chevrolet showroom so far. It slots in above the upcoming Bolt EV and the new Equinox EV, and it's meant to be a kind of sportier take on the whole General Motors Ultium platform. Ultium being the thing that's going to be the basis of pretty much just about every GM electric vehicle that we know of going forward. This has been our first chance to drive one. And we had a lot of questions like, is it really any good to drive? Is it sporty? Is it roomy? Is it comfortable? Does it get decent range? Well, we drove this one for a week. And let me tell you, we've come away actually pretty impressed. It certainly is wearing the latest Chevrolet SUV look. I mean, this is basically going to be a variation of the same front end on every vehicle in the Chevrolet SUV lineup from the Trax to the Tahoe. And frankly, I ain't mad about it. I think this thing looks really slick. Now, you've got this whole dancing light signature up front, which is becoming pretty much the de facto commonality among all electric vehicles that have the capability to do that, with the exception of Teslas that don't have any kind of dancing light signature. But again, not mad about it. I think the whole thing looks really slick. It's futuristic without being odd. It's sleek without being weird. The whole thing is really, though, more wagon than SUV in terms of its styling. It's got a fairly low roof. It's got this wide stance to it. And you know what? I ain't mad about that either, because you know what, folks? Wagons are cool. Want to hear about all the latest new electric crossover SUVs from Chevrolet and everybody else? Well, click that like and subscribe button and hit the notification bell, and you will be notified every time we upload a new video from cars.com. Looking down the side of the new 2024 Blazer EV, check out these wheels. 21 inches on this RS trim. There's two trims available for the Blazer EV currently, LT2 and RS. Now, the LT2 gets 19-inch wheels. The Blazer RS gets 21 inch wheels with 22s as an option, and I think they look great. They really fill out the wheel wells nicely. They give the Blazer a planted wide stance. And when you combine it with these aggressive muscular fenders, both front and in back, the whole thing I think really just looks wide and planted and <laughs> dynamite. However, there is one thing we need to talk about, and that is the charge door. Where is it? Well, it's up here on the front fender where God intended it to be. Now, that is a hot take, I understand. But when you are fast charging an electric vehicle, you want to be able to have easy access to your charge door. And you're always going to have easy access to the charge door if it's near the driver's door, because you have to pull up, you have to get out, you have to get back in. You always have to have access to the driver's door. So why not put the charge port near it? Only weird thing about this charge door is this motorized cover. Why? There's no need for a motorized cover. When you're operating this thing, you just know that this is gonna be the first thing on the car that's gonna break. The interior of the Blazer EV, I think is perhaps one of the biggest surprises. You see, I just got out of a Cadillac Lyric EV, which is basically the same vehicle underneath, but with a Cadillac body and interior instead of the Chevrolet body and interior that I'm in right now. And they both share something in common. They both look dynamite, especially the Blazer EV. This is a decidedly more sporty take on the whole look. You've got a lot of Camaro inspired elements in here, like these round gauges. You've got some neat patterns in the plastic trim that you don't see just about anywhere else. And you've got a lot of that in the Cadillac too. The Cadillac looks dynamite with its great big screen and with a lot of its really elegantly designed materials. But here's the big difference. In the Blazer, it all feels expensive too. You touch things in the Cadillac and they feel kind of hollow and cheap and, and inexpensive. You touch things in here, everything feels incredibly solid. Nothing is hollow, nothing feels thin like it does in the Cadillac. So I don't quite understand how that's possible that the Chevrolet actually feels more upscale than the Cadillac does. There's a lot of really nice design elements in here too. I really will applaud Chevrolet for the fact that they're including both touchscreen controls and hard buttons. You've got actual buttons and knobs for the climate control system. There's still a volume knob up here as well. There's buttons to control things on the steering wheel. It's not touch sensitive crap like you see in the Cadillac Lyric. Touch sensitive stuff should never be on a steering wheel. They do on the Cadillac, not here. Actual buttons. There's no part of the steering wheel that you cannot touch while you're driving. That's how it's supposed to be. 
There's also a ton of room in here. It's really quite surprising. The Blazer EV is not a small SUV. I mean, Chevrolet might call it a midsizer, but they also called the Traverse three row SUV a midsizer as well. And that thing's as big as a house, but there's plenty of room up front or in the second row as well. Tons of leg room. The width of the Blazer EV and its packaging efficiency really do create adequate space for five people to sit comfortably in here. There's also a decent amount of cargo room in the back as well, even more when you put the back seats down. Trailering is a little unusual. There's only 1,500 pounds of trailering capacity with the all-wheel drive model. Now that goes up to 3,500 pounds when you get just a rear-wheel drive model. So that does improve a little bit, but if you got an all-wheel drive model, you're pretty much not gonna be trailering very much at all. What's not so great in here? Two things. First, these seats. They're really flat and not terribly comfortable. There's no bucket to these bucket seats at all. And it's okay under short distances, but I have a feeling it'd be a little bit uncomfortable on a long distance drive. And the other thing, well, that's the elephant in the room that we gotta talk about. There's no Apple CarPlay. General Motors has decided that in all of their upcoming new electric vehicles, they're not going to offer Apple CarPlay. And the reason that they've given to us is that they can't integrate the kinds of communication systems they have from the car with a peripheral like an, an Apple iPhone. What does that actually mean? Well, the car knows how much energy it has and how much is currently stored in its battery, but the cloud-based navigation systems know where all of the chargers are. So in being able to talk to one another, they wanna do it through a native system, which is why this is now a Google-based operating system. And if you have an Android phone, you can sign up to it and integrate it into your whole pantheon of electric devices really quite easily. If you have an iPhone, however, like in pretty much half of the country, it's a little bit more difficult. You can still sign in to this whole system and it still does work with things like reading text messages and whatnot. And you still can have apps like Waze, which is one that I definitely prefer when I'm using navigation to find out where all the cops are, but it won't integrate nearly as well as it does if you have an Android phone. Now, the reasons for that that General Motors have given, I think are frankly kind of sketchy because they offer Apple CarPlay and the Cadillac Lyric, but not here in the Chevrolet Blazer EV. And competitors are offering Apple CarPlay as well. Ford has said they're not getting rid of it, and so has Honda. Really, I think it's more of a play from General Motors to try and get more subscription-based money out of its customers instead of being unable to actually offer a very popular system. And for a lot of people, not having Apple CarPlay is gonna be a deal killer. But then on the other hand, for a lot of current electric vehicle owners, like anyone from Tesla or Rivian, they don't have Apple CarPlay either and they're not going to anytime soon. So for a good number of electric car buyers, not an issue. But if you want to expand that audience, if you want to get more mainstream buyers into your electric car, not having Apple CarPlay, that might be a hard sell. There are two optional powertrains. You can get a all-wheel drive version in either the LT2 or RS trim, and that's making 288 horsepower and 333 pounds-feet of torque. It uses an 85 kilowatt hour battery, and the range on that thing is about 279 miles as rated by the EPA. The optional powertrain comes on the Blazer RS rear wheel drive with a single motor, and it's making 340 horsepower and 325 pounds feet of torque. It uses a larger 102 kilowatt hour battery, and that'll get it 324 miles of range, so more than the all wheel drive version by a considerable amount. Now, it's also heavier than the all wheel drive version because it's got the bigger battery. So it makes more power, but less torque and it gets more range and it's heavier. I guess the, the RS rear wheel drive is supposed to be the sportier version of the Blazer RS. I think this one has plenty of power. At 333 pounds feet of torque, it really does work quite well. It's got plenty of acceleration. Now there will be more powertrains coming for the Blazer. You're going to actually have the SS that's coming and that makes crazy amounts of power and torque, but it's also gonna be a lot more expensive. But there's also going to be a cheaper front wheel drive version of the Blazer EV in both the LT and RS trims as well. So this is going to be one of the few vehicles anywhere in the world where you can get a front, rear, or all wheel drive version. And that's just kind of crazy, but that's the beauty of an electric platform is that you can have these different kinds of combinations. So as for the rest of how this thing drives, it's really quite pleasant. It feels solid, it feels quiet, it's comfortable. The brakes are quite strong. 
and progressive. And you've also got this regen on demand button here on the left side of the steering wheel, where if you pull on the thing, it will actually activate the regenerative braking and you don't have to hit the brakes in order to slow the vehicle and it puts energy back into the battery. There's also a one pedal driving system, but I actually find it to be a little bit aggressive in this thing. I prefer to actually keep that off and instead just use the one foot driving system instead. What I do like about it is that it doesn't make a whole lot of silly spaceship noises. It just sounds like a quiet electric vehicle. You've got motor noise, but it's not intrusive, especially when you're accelerating. Now, maybe in some of the sportier SS versions, they're gonna have that kind of tunable sound, but here, you don't really need it. I also really do like the layout in here. It's got a lot of good visibility. You're not sitting on the vehicle, you're sitting down in the vehicle because you've got this high sill. It does feel more of a cockpit feel, which also adds to the sporty feeling of this thing. I mean, it's not a Camaro. It's not meant to replace the Camaro. It's not going to be a, a sports car, and I wouldn't necessarily want to take it to a track or even to twisty canyon roads, but if you're looking for the image of something sporty and you want something that is pleasant and engaging to drive, you know, this isn't bad at all. This is really quite nice. And combine it with this really decent interior that has a lot of excellent design cues and feels good as well. And I think this thing is a really solid hit from Chevrolet. I do, however, wish it had CarPlay. The Blazer EV really does feel nice. It, it feels like an expensive SUV, and that's because it kind of is an expensive SUV, although not as expensive as it used to be. See, the price tag for this well-equipped but not fully loaded RS all-wheel drive model is about $55,000, including delivery. But if your financial situation allows, you could take off another $7,500 from the federal tax credit, which the Blazer does qualify for. That would make the asking price for this car $47,500 or so, which is just about the exact price of the average new car in 2024. Now, if you want the Super Cruise semi-autonomous driving system, tack on another $2,600. It's not the least expensive Blazer EV either. You can get into an LT2 trim for about $43,000, including that tax credit. And Chevy says that a Blazer LT1 front wheel drive model is coming later that'll be even cheaper. Now, all of this represents a several thousand dollar price cut from when Chevy originally launched the Blazer EV late last year, a response to some market pressures and a move that immediately made the Blazer EV more competitive price-wise with many other vehicles in the segment. So it's affordable, it's spacious, it's comfortable, it's good to drive, it's solidly built, it gets decent range, can charge relatively quickly. It ticks a lot of boxes for people that are looking for an electric two-row crossover style SUV. The only thing I have to ding it for is that lack of Apple CarPlay. If you are an Apple person and you have an iPhone, that might be an issue for you. And for a lot of people, they say that that's a deal killer for them. It gives me pause on putting one of these in my own garage, I gotta say. But if you're an Android aficionado or you're part of the whole Google-verse, the integration is really a lot better. So. If Apple CarPlay isn't all that important to you, this is definitely one that you have to put on your list to consider. And maybe if you, Apple CarPlay is important to you, see if you can get along without it with this thing. If you'd like to learn more about the new 2024 Chevrolet Blazer EV, you can look everything up on cars.com.